It's week two of the NFL preseason, where depth charts and playbooks will be put to the test. It's the Orbits and the Oilers, and it's coming up next. This is the NFL on EA Sports as we join you from the so-called Space City, Houston, Texas. Tonight we move on to week two of the preseason and we've got a compelling matchup here between the Orlando Orbits and the Houston Oilers. Brandon Gunn, Charles Davis, happy to be back alongside you. And I'll tell you what, yes, it's just week two of the preseason, but now they've got one game under their belts and a lot of guys trying to prove some stuff down on the field here today. Not only that, these coaches like to win. And I used to think it really didn't matter who won in the preseason. Then I watched some of those shows that the NFL does, and you see the coaches in preseason after a long... And this taken in at the goal line. A solid return, pretty good field position. They'll start at the 32. So out comes this offense to take over for the first time. And bringing them out is the rare southpaw in his fourth year, coming off his best season as a pro to Atunga Bailoa. This is what this man was born for, the big spotlight on a national stage like this. Really, his entire career has demonstrated incredible poise no matter what type of situation his team was in. No situation is too big for him, and you can tell in the way that he takes the field. His self-belief is evident, and he gets the job done in his mind each and every time. Here's second and ten. Two are going to throw. Now the pressure gets there, and two is going to be taken down. It'll go as a loss of three on the sack, and it brings up third down. Here's Tua. And they'll get this on the screen to Mostert. And they'll get him down at about the 37, well short of the first. They'll get eight, but they're going to have to punt here on the opening drive because that's not enough. And the punter Bailey on now as he sends this one away. And this returnable for Sims. That'll go as a punt of 42, seven on the return. So out comes this offense to take over for the first time. Leading them out, a two-year starter at Ohio State and second overall pick in the draft, C.J. Stroud. I tell you what, when he's on schedule for that week, secondaries take notice because you've got to stay alert back there on every snap. A truly powerful arm, one that's capable of challenging any level of the defense on any given play. That's why so many scouts preach arm talent when preparing for the NFL draft. A quarterback with arm strength to make every throw in the book, he's an asset to have in any offense. The coverage may be too good that time as he breaks away for 19 with his legs and a first down. As we both know, there's a lot that went into why they made him their first round pick this year. Part of it was what they saw in college, his playmaking ability when things break down. As soon as he saw he wasn't getting a lane to throw, he pivoted and found an alternate way to the marker. In trouble and he's taken down. Jalen Phillips, the former first-rounder, getting in there for the sack. Well, we've seen how this quarterback can beat you with his legs. Saw it earlier on this drive, as a matter of fact. But that time, they had him covered. They really gave him no place to escape because oftentimes they're able to find a crack, a sliver, anything that can get them upfield. On that occasion, nothing open at all, and they swarmed him. Now on third and long, they'll look to throw. One, but incomplete. Well, anytime he reads man coverage, I don't think it's going to be the only time he'll try and hit that route to the outside in this game. He'll test the perimeter, but that time they were up to the challenge. On is the punter Johnston now as he sends this one away. Here's Hill on the return. 44-yard punt, return of nine. And out will come the offense as they take over. Back onto the field comes this offense, ready for their second drive. 
And on the first drive, three and out. And I know that these are professional athletes, but I would imagine sometimes you, you get the nerves at the beginning of a game still, don't you? Those don't ever go away. And typically, what I've heard from guys and what I remember from playing, if you don't have nerves at the start of a game, it's not going to be a great day for you. You're not really ready to play. So finding a way to harness those nerves and not let them affect you in a negative way, that's what all the guys are looking for. Looking to pass to him. This one complete to Jalen Waddle. And he's brought down, getting this one up to about the 35. Waddle's first catch, good for a first down. So Tua making the completion there. What's different about playing a left-handed quarterback like him? And specifically, I guess, what does this defense need to try and take away? I'll take the first part that you asked about being left-handed. We've got to find out if he can move to his right and still continue to be accurate. So I want to push him in that direction and see if he can get his body squared around and make those throws that he's used to making. The next part is, he's a dart thrower. Loves those short to intermediate routes first. Sit on those and make him throw the deep ball. Not that he's not capable, but you want him to prove it to you first. Tongue of Ilo on the throw on second down here. That's caught by the Notre Dame man. It's Durham Smythe. The completion was given up, but that's why you play zone defense, so that you can have people around the ball when it's caught, and you don't give up much run after the catch. Third and one, and Tua wants to throw it. Shreds the tackle. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. They only needed one yard on third down. They get 10 instead by going to the air. So a first and 10 now in Houston territory at the 46. Now a play fake. Here's Tug of Iloa. And they will not get the connection there. It's incomplete. Nice progress down the field was halted by that incompletion. They could try for some safe yards here to get things moving again or keep throwing it and pushing it downfield to try and pick up bigger yardage. Another throw on second down, and this one incomplete as well. They put a check mark in the box where the defense coordinator was saying, how well can we stay with these receivers if we're in man coverage? Because he just did it on that one, force the incompletion. That allowed him to get bolder with his pass rush, won't it? Absolutely, frees up your guys else. Oh, this is intercepted, intended for Hill. Jalen Petrie picks it off. Partner, when you're playing cover two, this is like a tag team for the safeties. Each of them gets a half-field responsibility. Their job, stay as deep as the deepest receiver in any zone, read the football, and go make a play. In this case, the free safety made the best play, an interception. So now we get set to see Houston for their second drive of the ball game. The last series for them, a little disappointing, forced to punt. And now they'll try to do better here and come away with some points as they begin this drive. First and ten. First and ten, it's Stroud. This goes to the tight end, Aaron Sauber. And they work this right up field across the 35. 25 yards there on the catch and run. And normally you see three tight ends in a formation, you have to think to yourself, this has got to be a run. And I know as a safety, when I saw that, I took an extra step or two towards the line of scrimmage. Instead, they threw the ball, and he found one of those tight ends for a very nice pickup. Xavier Howard up to make the tackle. Second down and six now. And they'll go play action here with Stroud. Short throw into the hands of Jordan. And he is across midfield from 149 to the other 49. A gain of just two. Throwing now is Stroud. It's caught inside the 25. And they'll wind up getting this one all the way down inside the 20. 30 yards there. And of course, the first down as well. That's just flat out a beautiful throw right there. It was a rope. That's maybe the speed you would see on a slant, but he threw that downfield with that kind of pace. Now, if he throws that one with any type of arc, puts a little air under it, that play doesn't happen. He had to fire it in there, and he did exactly that. Stroud off the play fake. Open man is Jordan, the tight end. Calling a gain of six on the play, and it'll be second down.
Here goes Stroud again. Throwing in a traffic there, and that's complete. His first catch, good for eight and a first down. They'll run here with Pierce. Try to bounce it outside, but he's only able to get it back to the line of scrimmage. They come up here with another shot from the six-yard line, and it's second and goal now. A give up the middle to Singletary. And he's going to press this one forward as they stop it right around the one. It'll be a gain of five, and it's going to set up a third and goal. Singletary again, and this time he is in for a Houston touchdown. Sometimes offense can get too cute down near the goal line, but there's nothing fancy about this one. As Coach Lombardi would say, we get a seal here, and we get a seal here, and we run this play in the alley. And that's good work to hit the hole hard and finish in the end zone. Kaimi Fairbairn on for the extra point. And it's good to make it seven to nothing. That time, a nine-play drive. And it was finished off by a Devin Singletary touchdown run. So after the touchdown, here's Fairbairn now to kick it away. And he won't get this to the 20-yard line as he's down at the 19. Orlando takes back over on offense. But not an ideal way to end their previous drive. They threw the interception, Charles, after they had built up some momentum. They were moving the football. But something to at least build on for this offense as they run back out here. Yeah, you're right about that. Up until that last play, everything was working pretty well for this offense, gaining chunks of yardage, getting first downs, really making a push for the end zone, and looked like they had a nice rhythm going. Now you got to have a short memory here. Don't focus on the interception. Focus on what came before it and get back to it. His first catch, good for nine and a first down. Now a give to Mostert running right. And he can only manage to get a couple. Second and eight coming up. Well, they always talk about playing great team defense, and that was an excellent example right there. Everyone on assignment, no one in the wrong spot, everyone filling their gaps. Second down, here's Mostert again. And they'll get it up just short of the 45 at the 44. 12 yards there and a first down. Veteran running back like him, we've seen a lot of those chunk carries in his career. And that's why you don't just look at his birth certificate and decide when a guy is done, right? Because you know as well as I do in this league, as soon as you hit 30, they're looking to let you go if you're a running back. Sometimes a little tread left on the tires. Looking for more there on first down, but this throw downfield incomplete. After one, seven nothing on EA Sports. Second and ten. Orlando with the football here to begin the second quarter. As they've got it with a second and ten. And they'll hold him to three there as he takes this up to the 47. Pretty good little two-play sequence there. You force the incompletion, then a very short pickup. Yeah, now maybe you bring in an extra defensive back or two because you want to try and defend on third down. They like to play those nickel or sub packages, don't they? Now a third down throw, but it misses the target incomplete. So a couple of first downs on this drive, but it's looking like another empty possession. And those empty possessions are certainly starting to pile up. So the adjustments that teams talk about all the time have to be taking place. They've got to analyze what's breaking down and figure a way to fix it. Now comes the Houston offense as they get set to take over here. Things progressing to plan so far. Their defense has been solid, and they've got themselves a 7-0 lead after the touchdown the last time they had the ball. And this is no time to even think about, hey, are we going to milk the clock? Hey, are we just going to do ball control? This is the NFL. 7-0 leads, they don't last very long unless you continue to push the envelope on offense. And he's taken down, but able to slip across the 35. 
First play of the drive going for 14 and a first down. Well, I'll tell you, there is no antidote for speed, even at the quarterback position, as he keeps it himself and turns it into good yardage. And it still takes time for a defender to react, even as quarterbacks carry the ball more and more in today's NFL. They're still a little bit in disbelief and realize, oh my goodness, he's running with the ball. He may be 8, 10, 12 yards downfield at that point. And a nice carry there of 15 yards. A good push up front and that run in between the tackles. Let's play the leverage game here. Offensive line just got lower than the defensive front, and they were able to get their pads on them and move them backwards and create space for the running back to run. And he gets it inside the 35 and just shy of the 30. That's another gain of 15 on back-to-back -back plays. Well, it certainly doesn't matter if it's been through the air work on this play or on the ground. I don't know what's going on with this defense. In a sense, they've been AWOL on this drive so far. Three plays, three first downs given up. They've got to find the answers, and they've got to find them quick. They'll run on first down with Singletary, and he can only manage to get a couple. Second and eight coming up. From the 31, here's a second and eight. Stroud working out of the gun. That one complete. It's tanked down. And inside the 20 before he's brought down. It's his first catch, and it'll be good for 15 and a first down. I think that's a big pickup for a first down because when you run a drag route against zone, you're sometimes asking for trouble because you might run into a defender. Yeah, well, there they ran into a first down, executed it to perfection. And he stopped immediately there. No gain on the play there. Second down. As Stroud now to throw. He'll complete this one to Collins. That helps the completion percentage, but not much else. And now it's third and ten. Stroud looking to throw. Being chased out left. And he'll hit the deck, but he did not get there. He'll wind up getting four yards there on his own, but it also brings up fourth down. Like any team playing, they're looking for touchdowns to try and help their cause. But in this case, he does get them a little closer at least if they think a field goal turns out to be the better call here. The kick by Fairbairn is good. And that will extend their lead even further. So that one on target, and it adds to this first half lead. And maybe we're too early to worry too much about one score lead, two score lead, etc. But this is where you kind of start banking those points that come in helpful later on. This fielded right at the goal line. And not much happening on the return as he'll get this to about the 23. Orlando takes back over on offense. Nothing for him yet from an offensive standpoint. Down 10 zip as they come up first and 10. They'll start on the ground with Mostert. And a short pickup to about the 25. I think they want to start getting back into this game. It behooves them to get better on first down. Yeah, certainly not what they were looking for there out of the opening play of this drive. Tua wants to throw it on second down. And this one too low. I would say it might be a good idea for him to reintroduce himself to his receivers at the half because they're definitely on different wavelengths. But I also don't advocate waiting that long. Next series before you get out there. Hey, let's get together, guys. Let's get this thing moving. Throwing his tongue of Iloa on third down here. And he completes it to Wilson. And they're able to get this one across the 35. We're following the play now. They're going to stop the clock here as a man is shaken up. Well, you hate to see this before the regular season even begins. Well, we'll take a break and come back. More preseason action in a moment. On first and ten, it's Mostert. And yeah, boy, this defense again really making things tough on him as they stop him for no gain. Now it's second and ten. Going to the air, Tugabailoa. Completes it to the tight end, Smythe. And a huge play that time. 41 yards. Uh, so often when we're watching a football game, we see one with a lot of ebbs and flows, and this one is no different. And sometimes you just need a big play to wake you up a bit. And they get one right there, 
That shot of caffeine this offense was looking for. So the big play gets him all the way down to the outskirts of the red zone here for first and ten. Tua sets up to pass it. Pressure applied, and he's going to be taken down. They sack him back at the 33-yard line. And while all of that was going on with a sack, it appears, unfortunately, we have an injured player. Sacks, a growing theme in this first half. This is second and long. And here comes throw number one for the backup QB. They complete it to Hill. Give him a gain of five on the completion. And they're going to face an uphill battle here on third and long. White. And oh, it'll be intercepted. Darren Stigley picks it. So it's third and long, and you know this is going to be a pass. So defensively, they're bringing an extra defensive back and just blanking the field. And this is an ill-advised throw right here as it winds up being picked off easily. But Houston's offense taking over again. And last time they got three points, but it was a chip shot field goal. And when you go to the sideline after a chip shot field goal, maybe the offense not too happy. It's a balancing act, isn't it? Because you're exactly right. They're none too pleased that they didn't punch it in for six points. But they also have to remember they did put points on yeah, the board. Three points is three points. And in this league, <laughs> you take points when you can get them. Not easily done. That'll go for a gain of seven, and it'll be second down. Now Stroud. A uh, short one going to be taken in here by Schultz. Nine yards to pick up there, and it's a first down. When the offense reads blitz, doesn't matter where it's coming from, tight ends know that they've become a big part of the passing game because there should be an easy outlet when all those extra bodies are trying to get to the quarterback. A hot route, so to speak. So give them five yards there on the pitch and catch, and that'll make it second down. Stroud will look to throw once more. He'll get this out wide to Singletary. And he'll go down right around the 47 this time. Six yards to pick up, and that's a first down. On the handoff, running left, Singletary. And he's out of bounds as he gets this down to the 45. A good run there on first down, and it'll leave him with a second and two. Play action. Stroud now. A short one going to be taken in here by Schultz. They'll get three as the drive continues. It's a first down. And the tight end is certainly a position built to move the chains because they can control space underneath. If they've got good hands, then, of course, they're a dynamic target. But one other thing is they're right in the sight lines of a quarterback on just about every play, and that makes it easier for the quarterback to pick him out and deliver. Stroud to the air on first and ten. Can't get away, and he's taken down. They couldn't contain Deshaun Hand that time as he gets home for the sack. Defense went 3-4. They got some push from the inside. And this is something in a 3-4 you don't normally get because the nose tackle who got the sack, he's usually responsible or ends up getting double teamed and sometimes triple teamed. How about him working his way back and putting the big guy on the ground? Ninth play of the drive now on third and a country mile. Stroud. He'll get this to Devin Singletary out of the backfield. Now the defense going to use the first of their timeouts as they'll head to the sideline and talk over what to do next. Stroud is hit, and the ball is loose. And the defense will get their hands on it, going the other way. And the possession is theirs at their own 43-yard line. So they tried it. Not only did they not get the first, they fumbled it away. Yeah, it's one of those things where it went from bad to worse, but I know that everyone's going to pile in on the call and say, well, what are you doing? Why would you go for it there? I think the teams that are convinced that they feel pretty good about their game plan, 
what they want to get done that day, go for it. And now, as with every potential turnover, they're going to take a second look at this just to make sure. Now, the question, was the knee, in fact, down before this ball comes loose? And is the video convincing enough to overturn it? A lot of factors here. Remember, you also need clear possession of the football afterwards. This is a tough one to overturn. So that one overturned. They say the knee was down, and that will not be ruled a fumble. The offense now at the line, ready for their next drive. Well, still early in this one, Charles, but the last time this offense was out there, they threw their first interception of the ball game. so try to avoid repeating that mistake here on this drive. And to put a positive spin on it, at least it happened in the first half and not in a close game in the fourth quarter, but you're absolutely right, partner. One of the last things this offensive quarterback wants to witness again in this game. Kind of an obvious question, Charles, but anything you try to avoid after your first pick or you say it's one interception, we're still in the first half, I'm going to do the same thing. I think you want to avoid playing scared, you know, and put it into the mind of the quarterback that you've lost confidence in him. Make sure you get some throws that he's going to be able to complete, make him feel good about himself, and continue to run your offense. On first and ten, White. And that is incomplete. Oh, the coverage a little too good there, and it's second down. From the gun, here's White. He's going to drop this underneath to Mostert. And a good stiff arm there before he's brought down on a nice little game. And unless this is a quick incompletion, this is likely the last play here of this first half. And with just four seconds left in this first half, a timeout call. So with four seconds to go in the half, here's the field goal unit onto the field. On the left hash mark, this is a 38-yard attempt. The kick by Sanders is good. And they get themselves on the board here. It's 10 to 3. But trailing here in the first half still, but maybe, Charles, that'll help them get some momentum back. First the force fumble, and then they're able to get a field goal out of it. And down in the game, they came out and created their own opportunity on one side of the ball and did get points out of it, as you mentioned. Complimentary football right there as they try to bring this one back to even. So we have reached halftime with a touchdown. That's the difference on the scoreboard. As we send you on over to Orlando for Jonathan Coachman at our EA Sports Halftime Report. Take it away, Coach. Okay, Brandon, thank you very much. We'll get back to you and Charles in just a minute. Week two of the preseason is upon us. Each team now with just one more game after this one. And then we will get it all started as we normally do on the first Thursday after Labor Day. All in right, our game, Coach, the defense yeah, is looking to be ready for the regular season. Changes in Maybe what's not been a the offenses just this yet, point. but still a half to go as we get you back out to Brandon Gunn. And we Gunn. will not see a return to start the half as this will be a touchback. This offense ready to go to begin this third quarter. And they got the lead. CD, what do you think the message was at halftime? I don't think the message was too drastic, I think, at the half or that they need to change things too much. I do think the offensive line could play a little bit better. And I think they'll try and help them out more. They'll probably keep a tight end in a few more times and maybe add a running back to the formation to pick up those pass rushers because they probably allowed a few too many sacks for comfort in the first half. Well, they had the run for no gain. Now they'll try again from the 25 on second and 10. Looking to throw his mills. This will be complete to Mechie. And just three yards on the catch there. He couldn't get away. And now third down and six to go. Now Mills. Able to find the open man. That's complete. And they get him down the nine before he takes it across the 40-yard line. He was held without a catch in the first half, but he's got one here, and he also picks up a first down. That's a play that will likely be forgotten when you talk about big moments in this game. But plays like this are critical to keep drives going. If points result, we'll call this play significant. First and ten, it's Pierce. And he's across the 45. It'll be second down. 
oftentimes we praise an offense for their variety of being able to hit people with the run in the pass. But in this game, how about what we're seeing from the safeties? They are all over the field. Doesn't matter if they threw it or if they're trying to run it. I don't think we've ever awarded an MVU most valuable unit, but you're right. It might go to them in this game. I like that. MVU. Well done. And that false start penalty certainly not helping their cause here. Second down and long. And they'll go right back to Pierce. And nothing doing. He's immediately taken down at the line of scrimmage. No gain that time, and it leaves him with third and 11 coming up. On third down, here's Mills. Pressure comes, and down he goes. More than one defender there, and that's a loss of five on the sack. That would be exactly what they were looking for coming out to start the third quarter. Get a sack, get off the field, get the momentum going in their direction. Get the ball back to your offense, right? Get that momentum because, hey, this lead is very, very slim. And here comes Berrios. A 46-yard boot, but just 36 following a pretty decent return of 10 yards. And they will take over first and 10. White looks to throw. And he's going to be brought down here in the backfield. The hard-hitting safety, Jimmy Ward, picking up the sack that time. Pass protection has been a problem all night long as they come up facing second and a bundle. A man who was both a prep and collegiate star here in the Lone Star State, Devon Achan. Three yards on the gain. They're going to need to do better on this next play. It'll be third and 12. We'll see what they have drawn up here. A little bit behind the line. 12 yards needed to gain a first down. White on third and long. He's got a man complete. And he'll have it past midfield almost to the 40 before being taken down. A great pickup there, 35 yards, and obviously the first down to go along with it. Well, that was a pretty good time for his first catch of the ball game, and it turned into a huge play as well. He's certainly not been a central part of this passing game so far in this one, but he made his presence felt there. A big pickup on third down. Motion man is Berrios. Uh, he's going to get it on the jet sweep. Oh, uh, this one it may need to go back to the drawing board. He's going to be swallowed up right away. Nice play by Jerry Hughes to drop him behind the line. So the first down run lost a couple. Now they come up second and 12 to throw White. And this one is going to be off the mark, too far out in front. At this point in the game, in the situation they're in, partner, these incompletions that we're seeing, they need to turn into positive snaps and soon. Now White. Under pressure, and he will go down. Sacked back at the 46. Taken down for the fifth time this game. Multiple defenders there to get him. I think you saw the same thing that I did there, partner. Remember, he's their backup quarterback, so the last thing they need is to lose another one right here on the sack. Looks like he's going to be okay, though. Yeah, he looked like he was favoring something in the left leg. Appears to be fine now, but you're right. That old line, they got to protect it. Well, they bring their punter out there now as he'll come on to kick this one away. This is away, but boy, headed straight for the sidelines. And this one goes angling out of bounds, and it will be spotted inside the 30-yard line. Houston set to take over. And both of these defenses have been stifling these last few drives offensively. Just not able to get anything going, so what needs to change? I think a lot of the guys will go back and review, so to speak, because everyone has someone assigned to how did each play work? Okay, what did, what did we use that kind of worked for us during this game? Try and get back to some of those plays, as well as the possibility of showing something you haven't shown already in this game and trying to change things up. Let's we'll see if they take the advice of Mr. Davis. A gain of 13, it's a first down. Now that was an excellent run, and when you see that happen, that's when you're seeing guys doing their job, and then some people doing a little bit more. Offensive linemen and tight ends, they're expected to block, but the wide receivers, all they want to do is catch passes, so when they block on a big-time running play and create extra space, you've got to hit the jackpot there. Second and nine. 
Another carry for Pierce. Give him three yards, and now they're left needing a conversion here on third and six. Well, that's not a run that's going to make any of the highlight tapes, but they've been moving it well all game on the ground. This is another one that keeps them moving forward. Mills to throw it. To Pierce, they set up the screen. And he'll be taken down, but he does have first down yardage. It goes as a gain of nine, and it moves the chains. I'm not sure that, that was necessarily a safety valve or a check down throw on third down. Sometimes you try to find the open guy and get him the ball. He did exactly that and found a way to pick up the first down. So from the 36 now, first and 10. Mills. Delivers another one to Pierce. So he'll be stopped here for no gain. And that's going to bring up second down. As a defense, you're more balanced when you're in zone coverage because you're able to keep your eyes on the quarterback and see the play develop in front of you. They're able to keep the quick pass in front of them and stop it right at the line of scrimmage. Now this one complete downfield on the left side. Touchdown, Houston. Brevin Jordan, 36 yards. And the Oilers have taken a two-touchdown lead now. Circle that drive because that might be one to remember. Well executed to give him a little cushion. Well, let's take it into the boxing ring. You talk about them commanding it, keeping the fight where they wanted to, whether it was in the center of the ring or putting them on the ropes because it was jab, jab, jab. And finally, the haymaker to put that drive away. Fairbairn good with the extra point, and the lead is now 17-3. So after the touchdown, here's Fairbairn now to kick it away. A solid return, pretty good field position. They'll start at the 32. Orlando takes back over on offense. Defense got the better of them last series, forcing a punt. See if they make a few changes in the game plan here and try to get points out of this drive. First and 10. Here's A-Chan to start the drive. And he's able to break out a one tackle, but then quickly brought down. Give him five on the carry there, and it'll be second down. Now White. Throw left side, taken in by Claypool. And he'll go out near midfield at the 49. White now on first down. Under a heavy rush, and down he goes. And now it looks like we're going to get a timeout here. We've got a man shaking up. Well, injury's never good, especially here in the preseason. Hopefully nothing serious. They'll take a look at him, and we'll step aside for a moment. Out of the gun, it's White. And that one on the money to Claypool downfield. And he is out of bounds inside the 35. 23 yards the pick up there. Now what we're seeing, this is much better from this offense because so far in this game, no touchdown to this point. And what's usually a direct correlation? Very few explosive plays. That's been their issue. Not able to make that big shot downfield or break one off but a nice game there for a first down. Throwing on first down, but this one winds up to be incomplete. Another attempt, another incompletion. I mean, I look at the scoreboard and where we are in this game, it comes to mind that they have to start getting the ball in the hands of their playmakers. Throw it to the guys that maybe can take a short pass and turn it into a long game or make people miss downfield. They've got to have points. And the guys who can put the ball in the end zone, they're the ones that need to touch the ball five yards now it's third and five here's white and that is incomplete but the pressure there on third down forcing the air pass fourth down coming up well, how about the coverage we just saw him break out on third down dive defense Blanket in the field with extra defensive backs and speed. Unable to find an open hole to complete that pass. Sanders' kick is good. 
And a second field goal here gets him back with an 11 now. It's 17 to 6. After the field goal, here comes Sanders to kick it away. And he'll get it up past the 20 to about the 22. And now out comes Houston. And they'll just simply be looking to build off the confidence of the last time out where they scored a touchdown. And confidence is powerful, isn't it? When you've scored once, you feel like you can go back out there and get it done again. Doesn't matter what the defense throws at them. They feel like they're in a groove right now, and they want to get out there and show it. Yeah, hoping to stay in that groove here this go around. Now a second and two. As they come to the line, they will not be able to get off another play as time has run out on this third quarter. We'll return with more preseason football on EA Sports. Two yards to go, second down. Back now here on EA Sports as we are set to bring you the home stretch here, the fourth quarter. And intercepted, maybe the turning point they need. And to the 43, so down inside the 45 to the 43-yard line, that's where they'll take over. Now with that interception, you feel like we got a ball game again. Remember, two-score contest and still time left here in the fourth. And in the old days, not too long gone either. Throwing the ball here would have been an absolute no-no, but the way the game's played now, throwing it makes sense. You just have to be careful when you put it in the air. Orlando takes back over on offense. The interception was a great starting point, but now they need points pretty quickly, down two scores. And now a throw on first down there, but it's incomplete. So second down, still 10 yards to go. Ball on the 43. White. Oh, he's got a man wide open, complete. And all the way inside the 15 before they drop him. The catch and run pays off for 29 yards. Well, every drive from here out is definitely crucial and critical. They know that they need to get at least three here to get it back to a one-score game. But I can't imagine that in their huddle that they're thinking at all about getting a field goal. They want to get into the end zone and then try and get the ball back again. Now HN on first and 10. And he'll get about three just outside the 10, stopped at the 11. Just not a whole lot of room to operate there on that carry. No, not at all. They did a really nice job staying in their proper places and not allowing any lanes to open up. To throw on second down, here's White. Over the middle into traffic, and that's complete. And here he'll get it down to the seven. The offense on third down tonight, they've converted a third of their opportunities, three for nine. This time it's third and three. Back to throw. White. Pass taken in by his big tight end. And he'll be taken down, but he does have first down yardage. They're able to convert with a gain of four. First and goal, and they got to be thinking a chance to get right back into this football game. A-chan. Going to be stopped before he can get moving forward as he'll lose a couple back to the five-yard line. Yeah, now it looks like we're going to get a timeout here. We've got a man shaken up. Well, you hate to see this before the regular season even begins. And we'll take a break and come back. More preseason action in a moment. The play fake, now White. Looking in zone, but it's incomplete. What a job by this defense all game long. They've come together and really said, no one's crossing our goal line, and they're definitely not going to start right now. You can just see the dejection. Feel like nothing is working off it. Touchdown! Robbie Chosen. A five-yard touchdown. And the Orbits have made it a one-score game again here in the fourth. Now, there was no going through the progressions on that touchdown pass. Yeah, nor was it necessary. His receiver won that route early, presented himself. No reason to wait. Go ahead and put it on him and score a touchdown. All right, now a big two-point conversion attempt still to come. 
They'll try and throw for it. And this is caught. They got it. And that could be an important two points. It gets him back within a field goal. Well, I guess the coach looked at the two-point cheat sheet, said go for it, get it to a three-point game, and they did it. Yeah, and sometimes you just throw out time of game. You don't worry about that. There's just a feel sometimes in making that call. And he felt good about what he had for a two-point conversion. And now they're only down three and feeling great about themselves. Now after the touchdown, ready to kick it away is Sanders. Taken at the goal line. And a good return as he'll be stopped just shy of the 30-yard line. Holding. They were trying to create some space to run. They created the penalty. And you work on it so much. You work on it so hard. But it's tough to simulate game speed in practice. That often runs you into a penalty. A throw there, but that's going to wind up incomplete. And a smart play there. He's probably saying, I wish I would have done that on the last drive instead of throwing the interception. On second down, Mills again. Swings this one out wide for Pierce. That helps the completion percentage, but not much else. And now it's third and ten. Mills now. He's got his man. It's Pierce. And he will not get what he needed as he stops short of the first down at around the 22. Five yards, not enough. And it'll be fourth down. Here's Cameron Johnston now as he's on to punt for Houston. We'll call that a 43-yard punt, two on the return, and it will be first and 10 as they take over. Orlando takes back over on offense. Their defense accomplished step one of the mission. They forced the punt. Now they'll look to erase that deficit and take a fourth quarter lead. It'll be a gain of just a yard, and it'll be second down. Oh, it's time to give a little credit there to the defense. They played that very well because it was a drag route, and he ran a little shallower than normal as he worked straight across the field. He was hoping he'd get lost behind the defensive line, but once he made the catch, nowhere to turn up field and gain any yardage. Delay of game, off it. So they'll go ahead and accept the penalty. Still second down. Second down, this is Wilson. And he is going to lose yardage here. And now it looks like we're going to get a timeout here. We've got a man shaken up. Well, injury's never good, especially here in the preseason. Hopefully nothing serious. They'll take a look at him, and we'll step aside for a moment. Now on third and long, they'll look to throw. Pressure from his right, and he goes down hard, flat on his back. Derek Stingley getting home on the corner blitz. And they'll send out their punter now. As the drive goes backwards, so he's on to punt it away. Nice punt, but good work on the return to get back 11 yards. Now Houston's offense taking over again. And Charles, a very uninspired effort the last time we saw them out there was a quick three and out, and they punted the football. Yeah, and you never want to get stopped so soundly during a series, but what would be even worse now is letting it happen again right here. They've got to get going. And nothing much materializing there on the first down run. He'll get a couple, and that's it. From a couple of yards shy of midfield, here's second down and eight. Working out of the gun, Mills. The throw taken in by Sims. That's good, the completion there for seven yards. And it'll leave him with third and a full yard to go. Pierce will try to pick it up. And he's got the first down yardage before he's brought down at the 42. Yeah. 
Mechie, the man in motion. First down, they go right back to Pierce. And he'll get it down on the play to the 37. And Duke Riley will get credit for the tackle. If nothing else, they've already taken a couple minutes off the clock here already as they come up second down. Here's Pierce on the counter. And this defense not ready for that one as he'll take this down inside the 25. 52 yards rushing on 12 carries for him now. Well, it is our business to analyze what we saw out there. And on that play, I saw a defense staying in base, not taking a chance, not blitzing in a situation where they absolutely need the football back. That's either a case of overthinking it or not thinking it through. If you do blitz, do you have to be careful about where you're coming from or are you just coming from all angles? You have to be careful about where you're coming from, obviously. But at this stage, you have to take a few chances as well. Mills throw completed to Mechie. And they're working inside the 15-yard line before it's all said and done. 11 yards there, first down. Pierce now up the middle. The broken tackle could not free him as he's brought down at the 10-yard line. A gain of three, second down. They go again with Pierce. And he will maneuver his way down to about the seven. Three yards on the pickup. That's going to set up an interesting third and about four to go. Looking to throw his mills. Work in the middle of the field, and he's got a man to play. And he'll be taken down, but he does have first down yardage. Three points separating these two sides with two minutes left to go in the fourth. So it's our home team here in possession of the football as we come back. They've got it first and goal as they search for what could be a game-sealing touchdown. Going for the knockout punch. They'll try and run. And he gets into the end zone. Touchdown, Houston. Dare Ogunbowale taking it in from two yards out. And the Oilers will add to their fourth quarter lead. And that right there is the definition of a statement drive. Here in the fourth quarter, trying to get to the finish line. And here, they were able to hold the ball for a long time and move it down the field. And how about them finishing it off with the touchdown run? Winning football 101. Check that box. Extra point by Fairbairn, up and good. And his guys will take a 10-point lead. So after the touchdown, here's Fairbairn now to kick it away. And he'll go down as this drive will start at the 25-yard line. The situation for him offensively as follows. Down 24-14. A minute 54 on the clock. You can't say the preseason isn't interesting. This has been great as they come up first and 10. That's complete to his running back, Wilson. And he gets this up to the 34 out of bounds there. And a really nice play call there to start the drive, especially if you're a team that has a little bit of a reputation for throwing it downfield. You come out, and you think maybe you can catch them off guard a little bit, and they did. A little screen pass, back door, and, and that time worked well for a solid game. Here's White. Rush coming, and he's taken down. Here comes second down. White looking to throw. Under pressure, and they got to him again. Now the offense going to use the first of their timeouts as they'll talk it over here before what will be an important third down. Now White, he's going to let it fly. That's going to be knocked away and incomplete. And this is four down territory here. They know down two scores at this late stage, 10-yard passes aren't going to do it. So they took the shot there, but it winds up incomplete. Now on fourth down here, that pass knocked away and in 
incomplete. They had to go for it with such little time remaining. And the ball will go over on downs on the short side of the field. So with that, we can just about close the book on this one, Charles. Yeah, what's the old expression about slim and none? Well, slim just left town on that <laughs> They're one. They're down to none? Yes, exactly right. we got to have two hands on the football here as they run on first down. Now a second timeout called for by the defense as they'll get it with just a shade under a minute to go in the game. And he's going to take this down to about the 17. Now the defense will burn their third and final timeout as they get the stoppage with a little over 50 seconds left to go in the game. So now one of the biggest kicks of the night is forthcoming. This just a 35-yard attempt from the left hash. Fairbairn able to put this one through. So the starting field position was terrific following the surprising turnover on downs, but the end result, only three points. Simply stated, I think you have to look at that as a missed opportunity. Fairbairn now following the made field goal. He'll send this one away. And he's up across the 25 and down at the 28. This is first and 10. White. Open man completes it to Claypool. And out of bounds on the other side of midfield at the 45. Here's first down. One final shot. They'll look to throw. at the end zone and that will be incomplete they were going for a consolation TD but it was not to be and time has run out now on this game and Charles you know what coaches always tell us we want to win our home games that much we know we want to protect our home turf they got that done in this one exactly right when you start a season everyone's goal win all of your home games split your road games and you're likely going to be in the playoffs but when you win at home boy what a great feeling that is you don't even mind if people are at your house when you get <laughs> home after a win like that so that'll do it for us for charles davis and all our crew i'm brandon gordon you've been watching the nfl on ea sports